everybody. Welcome to week 11 of the college football season. It should be a tremendous weekend of football as we head towards the end of the season. But as you'll be able to tell pretty quickly, there are some huge games in the ACC and the SEC. Let's get right to the board in the ACC. Probably the game that everyone's going to be paying attention to is right here. Wake Forest against NC State. Uh, that is going to have huge implications on the ACC championship representative from the Atlantic Division. Uh, and if you flip up to the Coastal, you've got Pitt in North Carolina. Uh, Virginia and Notre Dame is also going to be a game of huge implications. If Virginia pulls that off, that probably knocks Notre Dame out of contention for a New Year's Day Bowl. So could be in mix for ours, uh, our bowl, if Notre Dame uh, does not win that game. But Virginia's having a great year, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But that, that creates a lot of situations. In Miami FSU, don't forget that game in Tallahassee. That game also for Miami has huge implications as they move into postseason bowl play. If you pivot over to the SEC, all eyes are going to be on this team right here, Texas A&M and Ole Miss. A lot of, a lot of people think that, that uh, the winner of that game will move into contention for the New Year's uh, Day six bowls. A lot uh, will hinge on Texas A&M, which is right now is in a position if the season were to end today. They would be playing in the Sugar Bowl since Alabama and Georgia would be playing up. So that's a very, very important game. I really think the Georgia-Tennessee game is going to be a, a really good game. Tennessee is playing so much better than they were at the beginning of the season, and Georgia comes in undefeated, uh, a big target on their back, and we'll just have to see how things work out there. Uh, but a lot of movement's going to take place, especially in the college football playoff top 25. You've got a lot of teams that are playing each other that are ranked in the top 15. So things will really become a little bit more clear after this weekend's this play. But a lot of wonderful matchups. Pittsburgh, North Carolina game tonight on ESPN. Should be a great game. We're gonna throw it now to Kayla to talk a little bit more about Gator Bowl charities. Thanks, Greg. A few Gator Bowl charities updates for y'all, starting with the Gator Bowl Charities Award of Excellence Scholarship presented by Wells Fargo. As y'all know, it's a $2,500 scholarship given out to four local senior student athletes here in Northeast Florida and Southeast Georgia. The deadline to apply is this coming Friday, November 12th. So if you are a senior in the class of 2022, or you know a senior in the class of 2022, be sure to visit taxlayergatorbowl.com slash scholarship to apply and learn more. Once again, that deadline is this Friday, November 12th. So make sure you get your application in before then. Another program you've heard a lot about this year is the MBT Initiative, MBT standing for Most Valuable Teacher. That's a new program in partnership with FIS and the College Football Playoff Foundation that has given us the opportunity to recognize and thank local teachers across Duval County for all their hard work. Each week we get to give out $1,000 to a local teacher for them to use in their classroom and we are honoring 10 teachers total this year which has been super fun. We've given out five so far and we have five to go. The deadline to apply for that is November 15th, so this coming Monday. So if you are a teacher here in Duval County, make sure to get your application in. Like I said, we have five more teachers to draw, but the application period will end on Monday. The last program is a new one to the president's message for this year, but if you are a longtime Tax Slayer Gator Bowl fan, you know about the Send a Child to the Game program presented by ViStar. This is a program in which we bring local kids and their families to the game at no charge to them. We give them a full game day experience. They get transportation to and from the game, a pregame meal with our partners at Chick-fil-A Jacksonville, a commemorative t-shirt, and obviously a ticket to the game. So overall, it's a full experience for them, a really fun game day. We're able to partner with local organizations throughout Jacksonville, like Boys and Girls Club, Big Brothers Big Sisters, PAL, Daniel Kids, all sorts of organizations to give their students this opportunity. So if you'd like to support Send a Child to the Game, you can provide one game day experience for one individual for only $75. It provides their full experience. Or you can provide a bus of 40 kids their full experience for $3,000 and sponsor that entire bus. As always, we'll take donations in any amount to support this program. It has been one of my favorite programs year in and year out. If you'd like to support, there is a link in the message down below. So that's all I've got for you today. Be sure to listen on as Greg is going to finish it up and have a great week.
Thanks, Kayla. Our bold pick em winners this week, Bob Booth has, you know, I'd be hanging around Bob Booth very frequently. I think this is the fourth time Bob has been, uh, has picked him right every week almost. So hang around Bob Booth if you want to go play the lottery. Uh, the overall, the public winner was Ronnie Kelly. Uh, so again, Bob, you've got some talents. I want to start hanging around you a little bit more. Uh, Bob does a great job on our committee and has been associated with us for a number of years, so really happy for the success you've had, Bob. Also, don't forget our Pick'em uh, by 5 o'clock Friday. Go to our website, go to Twitter, find out so much more about our game. So don't forget about our, about our game on December 31st at 11 a.m. in the morning. We're going to have two great representatives from two great conferences, so stay tuned and we'll see you next week.